Hey, my friend, in this lesson, I'm going to show you the best chord shapes and chord progressions that we can analyze on Coldplay's debut album, Parachutes. So let's dive in with the first song, Don't Panic. We've got this chord shape right here. Bones sinking like stones, all that we fall for. So this is the shape of an F chord, right? But instead, we're not playing the bass note uh, by barring this way. We're going to play the middle notes fretted. We're going to open the first to play the major seven interval. And we're going to wrap the thumb around to play the first fret on the sixth string to, to have the big low note. And then we're going to use the middle finger and release it and put it back in as a little embellishment. And this kind of voicing is typical of Chris Martin on acoustic guitar. He's always going to play chords as to get a more comfortable fretting uh, position with the hands and then play the bass note with the, the thumb all around the fretboard, which we will see in more details later in this lesson. So that's an F major 7 with a little sus too sometimes. In the next song, Shiver, I love all the little voicings that the guitar player Johnny Bucklin is playing. Something like... Right? So that is a kind of an F-sharp sus2 if you do it all, but it's just the, the top three strings. And we're just gonna change the upper note. to create some kinds of little tensions and resolutions. It's a really big stretch, but you can try it with the other notes. And then uh, in the song, there's also a really cool part that does. And then he's gonna play almost all notes and end here, right? So that's kind of a, the, the stairway to heaven principle, right? Where you're going to have uh, the upper portion of a minor bar chord. And then you're just going to go chromatically down with the lowest note on the fourth string, right? So that's going to create, uh, that's an A flat minor chord going into a G augmented. Most people don't know how to write music with augmented chords, but that's the most typical way to start from the closest minor chord and just go down like this, right? And then end chromatically here, but they're gonna pass through and eventually end here, right? So like I said, it's like Stairway to Heaven, we just don't play the upper note, right? So it's really nice to add that in a song in a minor key, for example, because it adds a little little colors that you wouldn't get if you stuck only to the chords in the key, right? So those are little cool things in the song Shiver. Another thing that we get a lot, especially in early Coldplay, are alternate tunings or open tunings in a sense. So the in the song Spies, you get a tuning of E, A, C sharp, G, B, C sharp, right? So if you want to tune, you can play the fourth fret on the fifth string and make sure that your fourth string is exactly the same. And then the second fret on the second string and make sure that the first string is the same. So that you get... It's really weird by itself, but with the little chord shapes uh, that Chris Martin is playing, it's going to make sense. So we're going to start in a um, C sharp minor chord like this, and we're going to play only the notes on the sixth string, the third and the second, so that we can leave open the C sharp open notes that we just tuned our, our, our guitar in, and it's going to create some frictions and beautiful dissonance in the chords. So the first one is going to go like this. So like this. So for this one, it's not creating any friction because it's like a C sharp chord, right? So it's just adding more roots. But when we go down to F sharp, 
or especially G sharp like this. It's creating beautiful voicings. So it's either this for a minor chord or this for a major chord. Right? So he's uh, even using it in the song. There's like a F sharp major going to F sharp minor. And then you can play B major and A. Just a different way to approach it and view the fretboard with uh, different tunings. In the song Sparks, we are back in standard tuning with a capo on the sixth fret, and it's more open voicings to learn. So the song starts like this. So it's like little triads with the open strings that are ringing, right? So we've got this one. Super spicy. We don't even have to, to know what is the chord because it doesn't matter. I'm sure uh, Coldplay are, are not using charts with the name of the chords. It's just like you're playing this little minor triad with the open strings. Then you shift it. And then the major version of that triad. And then the minor. So all little voicings, what you can do is just to play the major version and the minor version and just shift them around and try to find sound. Really, really nice. In the song Yellow, it's uh, an alternate tuning. Also, we're gonna tune the first string to D sharp. So you can play the fourth fret on the second string and match the note on the first string, right? And what it does is that when we play in the key of B major, that's gonna be fully resonant because this is the major third of a B chord, right? So if we play, instead of playing a full B bar chord, we're gonna open it. And if you want to play it like Chris Martin, you're going to fret only three fingers and wrap the thumb around, right? And then a full resonant uh, B chord with lots of roots. And when we shift it around, for example, to F sharp, it's going to become super spicy, super colorful. And then an E chord, right? So it's like... There's gonna be a G sharp or something. Right? So all of these voicings with the, the typical Chris Martin <laughs> open voicings with uh, major or minor chords. Now the next song, Trouble, probably my favorite on the album. We are in back in standard tuning, by the way. That's why I need to edit the video a lot more than I used to because I need to tune in between the songs. So we got a piano thing at the beginning with beautiful chords. <laughs> Right? So we've got a G major 7, like this, which I love, and it's easy to play with only two fingers. Then we've got an a, a E minor with an added ninth, and a B minor. So beautiful chords, but what I like the most is a surprising chord change that comes after. So we keep playing the G, E minor, and even after he's gonna play a B with a, a double minor 7. To reach that little note right here, and then it's gonna be F, A minor, G, right? So we are kind of in the key of B minor because that's where it feels like home, right? That's where it feels resolved, but then we have an F chord, which is a tritone away from B minor. That's, that's the chord that fits the less in the, the key of B minor, right? So that's kind of a changing key to the key of A minor because you ha you've got after the chords F, G, and A minor, which is like... Da, da, da. We, now we feel more like home 
uh, at home on the chord A minor, which is the new temporary key, right? So then in the chorus, before you play F, A minor, and G, so you would expect to resolve back to A minor again, but we resolve to A. I never meant to cause you trouble. I love this part because the A major is really surprising once again. So it's like we're using what we call a Picardy third to play the root chord in major in a minor key. So instead of playing a minor chord, root chord, we play a major chord, root chord. And then after that, we play an E minor seven which is usually the five chord in the key of A minor, right? So the only surprising chord is the A major, but it gives a, a, a nice a nice vocal melody and nice chromatic notes that you can add in your chorus right here. So I love it. And then right back into the key of B minor. So I love how they change keys and how they pick chords outside the key to change like this. Then in the song High Speed, I also love the chord progression. Uh, it's probably another open alternate tuning from Chris Martin, but that's not what I want. We've talked about this enough in the lesson. Uh, I wanna talk about the chord changes. So you've got a, a G chord. And then we've got an E flat chord. And the last time we're gonna play a B flat. So what is cool is that if we consider that we are in the key of G major, we're gonna borrow chords from the key of G minor, which is something that I talk a uh, about in a lot of videos where I analyze artists to pick chords in the parallel key. So if you are in the key of G major, you can pick chords in the key of G minor and add them in your song in the key of G major to add more colors, more interest, more chromatic notes, right? So E flat is actually the sixth chord in the key of G minor. That's the sixth chord, right? But when resolving to G major instead of G minor, it adds a, a nice little... And it, Chris Martin does it on vocals, like... Da, da, to resolve to the little note right here. And it's the same when we go to B flat. That's the third chord in the key of G minor. So I would call that the flat three chord going to the root chord and the flat six chord going to the root chord. So really nice colors here. Then in the song, we never change. It's when you want to try the Chris Martin style chords without an alternate tuning or a capo or, or anything, right? So you can place your fingers like this for an F sharp minor chord with your thumb wrapped around. And then go to E major. So just like this with the And then you can try B minor and A and even C sharp minor. So if you want to play in the style of Coldplay, those are all voicings that you need to use. Then in the song, Everything's Not Lost, there's a really bold chord change on piano. It sounds really, really bizarre, right? So you've got an E chord. Then you've got this chord, which I'll try to find what that chord is. And then we have an F sharp dominant seven sharp five. And I think there's even a sharp nine on the piano. It's just not really playable inside the voicing of this, but you could do. It's a when I counted up my demons. So like, what is that chord right here? So I'm gonna try to, to make sense of that, right? So we're in the key of E major. And then that chord right here could be considered a C sharp dominant seven. 
It's just that we play the fifth of the chord as the bass note. So that would be a C sharp dominant seven on a bass of G sharp with no root in the chord. And then the F sharp altered with lots of alterations. So it doesn't make sense to go from here back to E because usually when you play this, you want to resolve to B, which is the dominant chord of E, right? So that, which is a nice flow. It's like a, a really nice jazz progression, right? We also call that secondary dominance, right? The dominant of the dominant. And that would make sense if we analyze it in this way. We start with the root chord. Then if we consider that this is a C sharp dominant seven, it means that this is the dominant chord of F sharp. And F sharp is the dominant chord of B, which they eventually play and resolve to E, right? So it's like... So it all works, but it's really long before they give you that resolution of B to E, which eventually comes later in the song after repeating that super spicy chord for a long time. If you want to go further with me, I have a free course for you if it's your first time on the channel. You can click on the first link in the description box and enroll in my course on spread triad chords. I give you chord charts, exercises, about 45 minutes of lessons for free in an online course format. My students have been loving it, so if you want to uh, go further with me after this lesson, you can uh, just take the free course and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. In the future, I'm gonna cover many albums and many artists also. So thanks a lot for watching and until next time, au revoir.